In this presentation, we will take a look at attribute sampling applied to test of controls focusing in on performance. You'll recall that when conducting a standard sample for test of controls, auditing standards require the auditor to properly plan, perform, and evaluate the sampling application and to adequately document each phase of the sampling application. Those phases including plan, perform, evaluate, document, we took a look at the plan last time. We're taking a look at perform this time. So the planning is now done. We're going to get down to the actual work, the actual doing, the actual performing. So perform, select the sample item. So we're going to go through select the sample items using either the random number selection or a systematic selection. We'll talk more about these shortly. Perform the auditing procedures. And these are going to be some terms that we will use as we consider those auditing procedures with relation to the uh, selected sample items. These include unused or inapplicable documents, voided documents, inability to examine a sample item, stopping the test before completion. So if we, th if we apply our example to this, then we're going to say that our example, we're looking at some type of verification in the controls of the purchasing. We want to see if there's a verification. We're going to take this purchasing document. We're going to check it to see if it has some initials on it, to with the, which would indicate that it went through the verification process. So if we were then to think about the selecting the sample items, we're either going to use a random number selection or a systematic selection in order to take the entire population, which is going to be these basic purchase documents, and then take some portion of them so that we can check or verify them. We're going to be, in essence, checking or verify a very simple check to see if it has the initials on it that we would expect that would indicate that the internal control that we're checking for has indeed taken place we will be keeping in mind these factors as we go through that process and we'll discuss them in more depth shortly so now we're thinking about the select sample items we can use either the random number selection or the systematic selection we'll start with the random number selection this would be the most common type of selection if we have a, a, a sample or a population how can we choose which ones we're going to test? Well, we can do some type of random testing. And we're going to have every item in the population has the same probability of being selected as every other item in the population. So that doesn't just mean that we take the, all the items and kind of randomly uh, ourselves look into it. Because if, if we just try to pick something randomly, we don't usually have a random selection. Although that might be a method that someone could use, but it wouldn't be completely random we'd have to use some kind of random number generator type of selection. And that would make it so that every item in the population has the same probability of selection as every other item. So uh, that's going to be our classical type of method when we think about any kind of statistical sampling. First thing that should come to mind is the default random kind of selection. But that's not the only method we could use. We could have a systematic selection. That's where the auditor determines the sampling interval by dividing the population by the sample size. The starting number is randomly selected in the first interval. Then numbers are selected in a consistent interval. So we might then basically pick the first interval and then select a random interval of numbers. Basically, if so, if we, you can imagine we have a list of numbers and we basically start at some point and then we randomly uh, select or not randomly. We have a consistent interval of when the next number will be as we go through that set of numbers. And in that, in that way, there's some pros and cons to this you can consider. The random sample is completely random, which has some pros and cons that there's no bias in the random sample in terms of which ones were picked. However, you might get unusual groupings because random samples might group and might just randomly group a lot of stuff in one area as opposed to another. And, and so the timing of when these things happen might not be as consistent. Whereas if you want something to be timed throughout the year consistently, then you might try to take some some type of systematic selection where you know it's going to be somewhat random and that the intervals uh, will be taken throughout the system but you'll have some more uniformity in that you'll have uh, items that will be there probably throughout the entire year given the given the format that you have selected within now we're going to take a look at the performance and auditing procedures and consider some of these terms so we're going to perform the auditing procedure in our case we're going to be checking that these documents have the verification that we're considering in the internal control unused or unapplicable documents so what if we have in other words in our random sample because we randomly chose these things we select some document that is either unused or it's not applicable we look at it and then we say this is just a blank uh, item it's not used it's not applicable for whatever reason 
Well, what do we do then? The auditor should replace them with a new sample item unless they are found to be unusual in some way. So in other words, if we if we took something that's unused and we say, well, this obviously isn't isn't some there's nothing wrong with it per se. It's just it happens to be something that's going to be an unused number. Should what should we do with it? Should we count it in our sample? No, we're just going to basically remove it and we're going to replace it with another one unless there's some problem with it, in which case it might be that that is a deviation from from the control. So in our case, if we found just a blank purchase order that has nothing on it, well, it wouldn't have a, 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 a signature that would have verification for it because it's blank and therefore it's it's not really applicable. So we would probably want to replace it and put another one in there. However, if we came to the conclusion that uh, it sh it, the, the thing should the, there should be something there to it because the, the invoice numbers or the purchasing order numbers should be in alignment, then we could consider it possibly a deviation uh, in that case. Now we'll consider within the performance and auditing procedures inability to examine a sample item. So what if we go through our process, we're looking for the purchasing document in our case and we, we have an inability to, to get it. We can't get it for whatever reason, we can't find it. Well, if we can't find it, if we can't get it and we should be able to get it and find it, the sample item is a deviation for purposes of evaluating the sample results typically. In other words, if we're checking to see if the initial is on it, to see if the control is there, if we go in and we can't find the document that we're looking for that should have the initial on it, well then we're gonna consider that uh, a deviation. Next, we'll consider stopping the test before completion. So is there some case that we might be able to stop the test before completion? Why could save some time if we're able to do that? If a large number of devi deviations are detected early in the test of controls, auditors should consider stopping the test as soon as it is shown that the results of the test will not support the planned assessed level of control risk. So if we go through this and we say we're going to check that our initials are on there uh, and, and check for this control to be in compliance with the system of controls and we just check a few of them, the first few that we check, we have a high rate of non-initials on there and therefore we have a high rate of items that are deviations. As, as soon as we hit the point where we say, hey, we have enough deviations at this point in time that this this we're not going to meet the standard that we were looking for, we could stop right there. We don't need to test more of the population to determine that we're not gonna meet the point that we're, we're trying to meet at. So there could be a point then that we could save some time and say, hey, uh, we found the, the number of deviations that has already surpassed those that, that we were uh, considering acceptable and therefore we're gonna stop in that case. It's not there a control deviation.